CNN streaming service is coming soon, Disney Plus is considering an ad-supported tier, and Dish is battling some content pirates. All that and more in this week's episode of Cord Cutting Weekly. Hi folks, and welcome to Friday, March 4th, 2022. And this is Cord Cutting Weekly, the show where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And like we said, at the very top, we've got a variety of stories to discuss, including Dish's claims that pirates are still profiting off the service's broadcast and CNN's upcoming streaming service. But first, yes, of course, if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those are both great ways to support our channel and we'd really appreciate it. And as always, for anyone that's joining us for the very first time this week, just a quick note. For all the stories we're about to discuss here, you'll find links down below in the video description. And those links will bring you on over to our news website, corecuttersnews.com, where you can stay up to date on all things streaming 24-7. And now, with all of that out of the way, let's dive straight into the news. First up, a new report out from The Information suggests that Disney is at least considering a lower-cost, ad-supported plan for its Disney Plus streaming service. Now, there's no official confirmation just yet, but it would make sense for the service. As it stands, Disney Plus currently offers just one plan, which you can sign up for at $7.99 per month or $79.99 per year. An ad-supported plan would presumably come in at a lower cost as a way to entice more people to its streaming service. Sibling service Hulu has offered ad-supported plans at a discount for some time now, so the concept is not exactly new to Disney. Still, with no official announcement just yet, it's worth asking you out there if you've been on the fence about signing up for Disney+, Plus but haven't quite made the leap just yet, what would be an ideal monthly price for a cheaper ad-supported tier? Feel free to sound off in the comments section down below. This week, we learned some of the initial details for CNN Plus, the new streaming venture from, you guessed it, CNN. According to the Los Angeles Times, the new platform is scheduled to launch later this month with a starting rate of $2.99 per month for early adopters. Now, that initial price is expected to last for the first four weeks, and then after that, new users will need to pay $5.99 per month or $59.99 per year. You can find out more about what the service will offer once it goes live, including live daily and weekly shows from popular hosts, in our full post linked down below in the video description. But it is worth mentioning that the new CNN Plus service will not be a standalone app. Instead, it'll be a new addition within the existing CNN app. And we expect to learn more about the new service as we near its launch date sometime during the final week of March 2022. From upcoming launches to upcoming not launches, this week we learned that the first week of the 2022 Major League Baseball regular season has been canceled due to ongoing disagreements between owners and players. And while baseball fans will have to wait and see what happens to the upcoming regular season, the dispute is already impacting cord cutters and streamers. For one, MLB.tv opted not to automatically renew subscriptions due in part to significant pushback from fans on social media. Elsewhere, the delay may also affect the planned rollout of Sinclair's Bally Sports streaming app, which was supposed to soft launch with Major League Baseball games initially. It may also affect plans for NBC's regional sports network streaming service. NBC's RSNs currently have deals with five baseball teams, though it's not quite clear which ones would be involved in a streaming service. In any case, we'll continue monitoring the situation as it develops, and you can find out more in our full post linked down below in the video description. Next up, Dish is claiming that the people behind the service it sued back in 2018 are still offering pirated content. So back in 2018, Dish was awarded $90 million in damages from Set TV, which was found to be illegally redistributing Dish's broadcast. Fast forward to today, and Dish says Set TV's co-owners managed to funnel money out before their assets were frozen, and then that money was used to spin up new pirated services. According to a report from Torrent Freak, several IPTV services were involved, and Dish says those former set TV operators are still at it today, using services to retransmit Dish programming from its satellite and Sling TV services. You can find out more about the ongoing story in our full post linked down below in the video description. This week could be a big deal for anime fans. So back in August of 2021, Crunchyroll and Funimation announced a merger that would combine two of the biggest anime services around. And this week, Crunchyroll announced that current and new subscribers now have access to content that was previously exclusive to Funimation. 
In all, that means that Crunchyroll now has more than 40,000 subtitled and dubbed episodes, with more scheduled to join the lineup in the future. And in case you're wondering, no, pricing for Crunchyroll's ad-free options have not changed. So the tiers still start at $7.99 per month and go on up to $14.99 per month for what the service calls the ultimate fan. And of course, you can find out more in our full post, which includes a link for Funimation users wanting to learn more about moving on over to Crunchyroll. In live TV streaming news, it looks like Fubo TV isn't quite done experimenting just yet. You might remember a while back when we reported that Fubo TV was testing out quarterly plans instead of monthly options. Now that test lasted about one week in total, but now we've got a new one to discuss this week. So this time, the live TV streaming service appears to be experimenting with what plans are on offer on its site. So for some visitors to its site, the service is offering three plans, starting with a pro package at $69.99 per month. Other users, however, can still see four plans on offer, including the starter plan at $64.99 per month. We reached out to Fubo TV for a comment and a spokesperson said, quote, Today, we launched a test of our channel plans and sign-up interface. Some new consumers are being offered the pro, elite, and Latino plans. Over time, we've noticed our best engaged customers maximize their DVR use. Given the DVR capacity is limited in the starter package, as well as the number of concurrent streams, we'll be testing making Pro the primary offer for new consumers to provide greater value around their DVR and household sharing experience. You can find out more, including Fubo TV's full statement, in our full post link down below, but heads up for anyone visiting the Fubo TV site during this test. And last but not least, just a quick programming reminder. In a video published earlier this week, I explored the world of the basic Netflix plan. Following Netflix's most recent price increase, I was curious whether I could tolerate the reduction in video quality and other limitations in order to save a few bucks each month. And while we do watch some content on smaller TVs in an office or bedroom, the vast majority of our Netflix viewing occurs on our LG OLED 4K TV. So that begs the question, how does non-HD content look on a large 4K screen? The basic answer is definitely not as sharp and detailed, but perhaps not as bad as you'd expect. So if you're interested in saving a little bit of cash, I'd highly recommend checking it out. We'll have a link to the video down below as well as a link to the companion post over at coreandcuttersnews.com. Not to give anything away, but it was definitely an interesting experience and I learned a lot. And so there you go. Those were some of the top headlines from the past week. And as we always say at this point, thank you all for tuning in. And again, please do consider clicking on those like and subscribe buttons down below. They are both a huge help to our channel and they help signal to YouTube that it should continue recommending our content to more and more viewers. For now though, I thank you all again for tuning in this week. My name is Philip Palermo and I hope you all have a safe and enjoyable weekend and we'll see you all next week. Take care.